Welcome back to Cocktails and Classics. I'm Dylan. Joining me as always are Ben, Cam, and Zach. And this week, we did the 2000s classic Requiem for a Dream. Kick things off and get everybody in the right mood, we're going to go to this week's cocktail. A Requiem for a Dream. Hey, see, you know, the names, they do those crazy things. It is two ounces of red vermouth, five ounces of pomegranate juice, one ounce of pomegranate, just for like a little garnish, and then uh, you're going to pour that over ice. I know Cam hates vermouth. You know, it's it's tart. It's a little little you get the little whininess from the vermouth. It's it's an all right. It's an all right drink. You know, I'm I'm not gonna like fluff it. It's it's all right. <laughs> yeah, this one hits right up the mediocre pipeline. It's meh. I don't know. I don't know why it's called that. Like, I don't know if it's just like a an ode to the movie, but. Um, I don't know. I was I was trying to like I was thinking we could find like a like a liquid heroin or something, you know, something wild. Yeah, Dylan was just out looking for heroin <laughs> till some junkie started shooting up the place, and then he couldn't score. He's a fucking loser. <laughs> well, I mean, for like for four twenty, Cam literally found like a liquid marijuana shot. So I yeah. was like thinking in that same vein that we could find something because the big part of this movie is speed and heroin. Damn, we should have just done speed and or heroin. I was gonna say we should have just we should have just done amphetamines. Wait, you you guys didn't do <laughs> speed and heroin? Podcast gets recorded in fifteen minutes. Play it back. Like, what the fuck did we record? <laughs> it's like Alvin and the Chipmunks. <laughs> uh, no, when the when the mom is like gritting her teeth, like she's like croaking Ugh. or whatever. She's got like the speed croak. I was yeah. like, oh god. Well, if you if you want to make a Requiem for a Dream, we didn't give it a Shining review, I'm sorry. But if you want to make a Requiem for a Dream, check the show notes below. And uh, hit up those Drizzling Casker links. Get yourself some vermouth delivered directly to your door. And uh, we get a little kickback from that. Check out Requiem for a Dream. It's currently on HBO Max as of recording. It's going to leave soon, so you may want to check it out now. Right now. Pause this. Go watch the movie. Hey, Seth. Are you still here? Requiem for a Dream is a 2000s drama film directed by Darren Aronofsky. The book was written by Hubert Selby, and uh, screenplay was written by Darren Aronofsky. It stars Ellen Burstein, Jared Leto, Jennifer Conley, Marlon Wayans, Christopher McDonald. Uh, it's the story of uh, a drug-induced utopia as four Coney Island people are shattered when their addictions run deep. Currently sits at an 8.3 out of 10 on IMDb. Makes it the number 97th movie on the IMDb Top 250. And it was nominated for one Oscar. Uh, best Supporting Actress? No, Best Actress in a Leading Role for uh, Ellen Burstyn. Ellen Burstyn. I had seen this movie. Had anyone else? No. Nope. Wow. Nope. Just you. Know, you. It's, it's funny. We, we, we talked about earlier, like kind of like what were the film years you know there's like that meme like what are the best film years 2000 has some hits this snatch memento that we just watched like there's some good movies from the 2000s harry potter and the philosopher's stone i think that was 99 was it or no was it 2000 i don't know i gotta get a fact check hold on scream can, three can i get a number crunch uh Road sorcerer's Star? stone was 2001 also sorcerer's stone Let's say I thought that was two thousand one. Was the original release name Cam? Get with it. No, you guys don't understand. Zach saw the foreign Bollywood knockoff, and that was made in two thousand four, and it fucking slaps. Dude, some Bollywood movies are utterly hilarious. We should do one for the pod. I know how I feel about this movie. How did you guys feel about this movie on your first viewing? This one was strange. Possibly the most disturbing movie we've actually watched. And that's like, I don't even think that's an exaggeration. I think this is like one of, if not the most disturbing movies we've watched. I forget, like, when I saw this movie last. I definitely. 2000, Dylan was saw it as <laughs> Saw it in the theater. Saw it as a six year old wolf. That would have been one of those movies IMAX. that corrupted me way too much. Uh, no, it, it was definitely like high school, co- early college, but, uh, I really enjoyed it the first time I saw it. 
<laughs> I mean, not like what I wasn't. You like, enjoyed yeah, it? Fun? Yes. <laughs> oh yes, this movie is awesome. so cool. Oh my god! I wow. can't wait to watch that again. <laughs> you guys want to replay it right now? <laughs> it's so hard to <laughs> think of a movie again. that is so influential to like cinema in the 2000s as this one, though, because just the I I feel like it's definitely got that like style with the like kind of electronic beat like. Moby type score in the background, but <laughs> Moby, <laughs> the, the way it's um, just the way it's edited is so unique, and I think there's like something two thousand, three thousand shots or cuts in the movie, and a normal movie maybe has like six or seven hundred. Uh, just the like quick cuts when it's like the drug scene between like all these like extreme close ups, the crazy like spinning shots above people like laying on beds and and like tweaked out or uh the split screen of like two people in the same room on the same bed talking to each other but it being like a split screen is like just something i hadn't seen before this movie and something I, I some of those things i haven't really seen oh the snorri cam i always forget about the snorri cam in this movie the uh, camera that's like directly attached to their face or their back of their head, where they're oh, like moving okay. and the world's like just like they're, it's like directly like anchored to them in the world. Around. Those are intense. Even just when when Ellen Burst's character is walking down that hall, and she's she's like really tripping at this point. Oh, Her yeah. brain's starting to get fried. Oh my god! It looked like it came out of a horror movie. Also the the things where like a character is. A character is moving, but then the background, like they're just green screened onto a background that is moving in like even faster than they are. Or the stuff in the prison where it's like tweaking the whole screen. Yeah. Yeah. Where it's they're in focus, but still kind of like jostled and everything behind them is super out of focus and moving like a mile a minute. Yeah. That shit. The sound design in this film alone, like should have won an Oscar or oh editing or sound design at least the soundscapes are incredible especially like the like that scene when she's in the hospital and they can just hear can you hear me can you see me yes and then it just kind of like repeats and repeats and then you're seeing everything else as it goes and you're hearing everything else Ooh, god that's uh that's an that's the type of shit you don't even have to watch it you just like sit in a dark room and listen to it and feel anxiety the screen isn't needed to make you feel that. This movie is big sad. <clears throat> I look up other sad movies, and this movie is top of big sad sad movies. I find it difficult to grade these types of movies. Right? Um, I agree with you. for me, it's like, did I enjoy this? Absolutely not. Like, would I have gone back in time and not watched this movie? Yeah. Is it... Like, truly a bad movie? No. You know? Like, technically, I guess it's good, but it's kind of, like, comes into that, like, subjective rating part of it, where it's like, I wouldn't recommend anybody watch this, personally. Like, not saying it's bad. I just, like... It is the opposite of a feel-good flick. Well, yeah. This is not I mean, a movie that's like, I've got nothing going on, let me turn on Requiem for a Dream. <laughs> <laughs> But if that's I don't you, know what the set because we can connect you with somebody. Well, that's the thing is I don't know under what setting you would watch this movie. You've never like, seen when it do before. You, yeah, like when do you watch this? When are you like now is the time uh, for anytime, Requiem for like a Dream? Him. Anytime? Yeah, I don't know. So, like, easy Sunday morning, making breakfast. I mean, yeah, exactly. Any, what's that. a good way to start the day? It's what's a any, good day to start my day. Let me watch no. Requiem for a Dream. Dylan That's likes what I to watch it Saturday. When he I know gets... it's a bad call. I don't know why he did that. <laughs> when Dylan's like happy and in a good mood, he watches this movie just to bring him down a couple pegs. You know, yeah. Really watched... reset where he's at. I watched it before I went to bed last night. So what? <laughs> <laughs> he, he didn't sleep. <laughs> he just now rolled out of bed. Um, <laughs> I will say, it, when we were kids, um, we had the Dare program to try and sway you from drugs, <laughs> which I feel yeah. like is super ineffective because, like, you know. I did they tell so you all these drugs after that program because all of the dare officers smoke cigarettes. 
<laughs> well, they, yeah, yeah. yeah, they tell you all these like weird stuff. It's like people are gonna like threaten you with drugs. They're like, hey, take these drugs, kid, or else I'm gonna <laughs> cut your brains out, you know. And it's like that's not super helpful. However, uh, if you really want to scare kids off of drugs, I think you do maybe show them this one. Like, yeah, eh, that's a good depiction of. Well, maybe, maybe I'm not saying children. Yeah, it's more like them. I'm a, well, yeah. Maybe skip yeah, that, maybe or you, when she goes and visits the drug dealer the first time. Yeah, maybe you maybe you skip past those parts. But, I didn't take um, it out to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, God. man, freaking Keith David so good, there! Man. I did not expect Keith him David. to come in. I was like, oh god, damn it! <laughs> no, you're too good for this. Don't do it. <laughs> I will say, this movie is like, you know, it's it's like gut punch after gut punch after gut punch, but the. F- the final fourth or like the final act once it gets to winter is oh it is so good though like the way the music moves with the entire rest of the movie is is just like mind blowing to witness like it is fucked like it is not a great time but i this movie is like a tour de force it is i would say a masterpiece movie by a filmmaker yeah, I mean, I think the, I mean, Ellen did such a great job in her role. I mean, the other actors and actresses did as well, but like just playing this like, I don't know, frantic, drug-addled woman, you know, like who's just going insane. Like she, she did so well. I feel like I'm surprised. Oh no, we said that she was nominated for something. She didn't win. Oh my god, the yeah, scene where she's she lost. The scene when she's like talking, Harold goes and visit her, and she's like, he's like, like, why are you doing this? She's like, I'm somebody now, Harry. Everybody likes oh me. God. Millions of people got. You're just like, oh my god, your heart just kind of like breaks. Yeah, it's when you realize that she's so lonely. Yeah, you're just like, oh my god, this poor woman. The scene it- with her on the train is so hard to watch because. Everything she's saying, you've been hearing throughout the movie, and like you understand that she got the phone call, and she's going to be on TV, and that's why she took the pills. And everybody on the train is just looking at her like she's a complete lunatic. Yeah, like you know, you know why she, this has all happened, but for everyone else that has no context, is like you're you're batshit insane. That was the scene when they're showing everyone put the makeup on, and hers is like half over her face. She's like, like her, her Joker lip-sync's moment. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it was just like juice by Sarah. Shit. Juice by Sarah. Oh. Also, <laughs> also, my God, did they not get any other channels? I don't. She just wanted to watch. Uh, she just wanted to watch Shooter McGavin uh, picture some juice. Sell some thing? juice. <laughs> it sounds like it has a juice commercial, but also more to do a game actually, show later on. I feel like it's. It's supposed to be like a weight loss program because it, it comes yeah. up like they show it like spinning like a tape or a book. So I think you're it's supposed to be like a book or something you buy. Yeah, but apparently get, you also a go on and win. Book. You yeah, because he's like, you got to cut out these three things. That's what changed my life. But you never learned the third thing. I don't know if the third thing was. Yeah, but also <laughs> we might in, find out later. Every time. Requiem for a dream every- too. <laughs> Every time they show her winning the prize, it's like like a happy life for, is it Henry? Harold. Harold. Harry, damn it. Harry, yeah. Harry and Seymour. Always... Seymour Butts? No. <laughs> it is shocking that Ellen Burstyn did not win an award for this performance, because as soon as the movie came on, I looked at her and I was like, oh, that's the mom from The Exorcist. And then yeah. five minutes later, she was Sarah Goldfarb through the rest of the movie, and it broke my heart every time she was on the screen. She is also, as a random side note, she also plays Elliot Stabler's uh, mother in Law and Order. <laughs> of course, you know SVU that. SVU and the new one, uh, uh, Organized Crime. Oh, she's from Detroit. Shout out Ellen she Burstyn. Is, she is in Detroit. Or she was I was going to say. She is from Detroit. I was uh, going to say they're remaking The Exorcist next year, and she's reprising her role. Because when, so when I saw her on the screen, I was like, oh... That's Elliot Stabler's mom, not that's the woman from The Exorcist. Because <laughs> I've seen that more recently. Movie about I, mean, I haven't drugs seen The Exorcist, but I've seen that more recently. Movie about drug addiction and sex abuse, and Cam was just waiting on Elliot Stabler to walk into the room and save the day. 
I was looking up quotes and I was going to ask you guys which one was the saddest, but I'm having an issue putting <laughs> I don't want to even discuss that. <laughs> I feel like there's... There's uh, so many. I mean, are there sad quotes? I feel like there's... I mean, I guess there are some. Yeah, it's just more so like the entire... Literally the one we talked about where the mom is like, yeah. I'm somebody now. I have friends. Right. I have the best yeah. spot in the sun. I will say, whenever Harry's like, oh, it's going to work out so great. It's, everything's going to be great. And then it's like, dude, absolutely no way is that ever happening for you. Yeah, I feel like one of the saddest, and it's not even the actual dialogue, it's the delivery is the last phone call he has with Marion. Oh my God. Where she's like, crying. when are you coming home? And he's like, I, uh, I'll be home later. Can you come home today? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll come home today. And it's just like, Oh my God, this shit's deep. Cause they both know they're never going to see each other again. Like that's, this is it. So here we go. And it's just like, damn, this is really, this movie is deep. Even the scene where she sleeps with her therapist and then comes back and just sits on the couch next to next to Harry and they don't say anything. It's just the TV in the room lighting them. And the music is, oh, it's just a knife right in your gut and it won't stop twisting. Well, even that scene of her leaving and going and getting in the elevator, like that whole thing yeah. just like, and I know that's also cut with whatever other, I think there's a couple other like, sad things happening right isn't there a moment with marlon wayne's character that's kind of like interspliced with that i feel like i think that might just be when he's like sitting in bed with the picture of his mother oh, that, that might be sad it. too but like yeah they're they're going through and like that whole thing of like her leaving and just oh god yeah this whole movie is just imagine just like holding your arms above your head and letting someone just repeatedly punch you in the stomach. That's that's the best way I can describe this movie. In a weirdly good way? It kind of teases you a little bit. Because the movie's set up as like spring, summer, fall, winter. Like four seasons. But it's like, yeah. oh, all right. Yeah, like we do a little drugs. But like we're going we're gonna to buy some. And we're going to basically work our way up to get some pure heroin. And like cut that and we're set for life. And then pure, baby. things kind of going going good in the summer, and they're making money, and they bought the shop. It seems like, or did they at least find a place they wanted to rent for Marion's yeah, clothes? They, well, I think they did end up renting it. Okay, uh, so they like found the place for Marion's clothes shop because she that's what her thing is, and and they got the case of money, and everything's good. And then it's like peaks right as Marlon Wayne's character, I think it's Tyrone. That's his name, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's like right as like Tyrone is talking to the guy, the the like uh, deaf drug dealer, and he's like signing, and he's like, "You're a good guy, like whatever," and like I'm gonna let you in, but if you fuck me, I'm gonna kill you. And then he's like, "You got a white driver," and gets shot immediately. Like then we start to just go down. <laughs> like it's immediate, like tipping point of the movie. It just gets straight fucked from there. Oh yeah. The last 10 or 15 minutes of this movie, is there, like, a harder 15 minutes of any movie to watch? 30? Less 30 minutes of the movie? Yeah, <laughs> like, last hour and a half I mean, of sure. this movie. <laughs> there's the like, last hour and 48 minutes of the movie. <laughs> there's, like, uh, there's no, literally I mean, it, no room to breathe in the last 30 I mean, minutes. 30, yes, but I, w I will say there is something very specifically awful about the last, like, 10. Because that's, like, somebody gets where their there's arm no cut dialogue. Off. What? Somebody gets their arm cut off. Um, well, right, there's, like, no dialogue, really, and it's just, like, a intense action, almost like an action kind of scene after scene of them, like, doing stuff to every single character, basically. Yeah, the ass-to-ass, -ass, the arm cut off. Uh, Sarah's admitted to the institution for like real, real, and her friends here there. Tyrone's yeah. in jail for and being abused by like the racist cops as well in jail. And he's, yeah. and he's also detoxing, yeah. so like he's going through withdrawals and everything. It's fucking intense. Yeah, I. Yeah, I don't know. Any movie? I. Okay, this is gonna be a complete swerve because we're talking about the ending. We talked about the fucking beginning of the movie where the mom's locked in a closet and like 
yeah, the he's anxiety stealing the TV, just yeah. of that in general, where it seems like he's about to snap at any moment. Oh, yeah. And then he wheels the TV down and he's just like, hee hee hee, okay, this is good. Yeah, we're just going to do this again next week, Mom. Yeah. You know you'll get your TV back. Yeah. Yeah, you'll know you'll you'll buy your TV back. You might as well just give me the drug money and skip the steps. <laughs> Did Sarah walk that TV back the way Harry walked it down to the pawn shop guy? I would assume so. I'd assume so. I hope not, because that was there. so far. He, like, turns walked it down out, to the pier and stuff. Turns out all the weight she thought she needed to lose, just pure muscle from moving TVs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Moving she the same TV. <laughs> I, the, I think one of the things that is, like, most vivid about this movie is when his arm starts to like go sour oh. and, and he has to like oh. shoot he shoots it into that like nasty oh sword. god he has to or he'll blow the vein it's so disgusting it is that is probably one of the most like i legit iconic my, my <laughs> eyes and looked away i was like i'm not i can't I was literally feeling like I was going to throw up. Well, and they like super, they like do an extreme close up on it too, which is like, come they on. They do. And they're like, you're going to watch this shit. Oh, no. You don't want to, but you're going to watch him inject himself into his fucking pus filled cesspool in his arm. You don't arm. want none of this shit, Dewey. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah, it's, it is definitely a rough movie to watch. The thing is, I don't, I don't, I not necessarily feel bad but like i don't i don't have like a, like i guess i don't feel bad for like jared leto or marion or tyrone's character like yeah their lives are fucked and they fell to addiction but like i feel like the person you feel the worst for is the mother because well, like sh- she didn't mean to like the doctor gave her the the pills like but she she knew that like what they were for but then she becomes addicted to the speed without knowing like right. the addictive properties well, that's the other and thing then... too right is she's like oh there's a doctor for that cool and then she's just like taking pills from a doctor because like you know a doctor tells you to take pills you take pills that's what you do are we about to get and... into opioid crisis right here i mean are we no, about to I'm get into no, 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 no we about no, to get no. into some sort of weird anti-vax territory no what no. okay no 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 we're going we're you going know, opioid crisis the doctor here. just the doctor Doctors just prescribes you to get killers. some vaccine and you're just supposed to get it no matter who you think the president is, they both think you should get the vaccine. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but no, I mean, she... You feel bad for her because she does it. The, what she thinks the doctor's telling her to. And then, yeah, she just gets into it too deep and she starts, a, you know, taking... I mean, it really starts going downhill for her when she starts taking all of them at the same time, you know. And she's in too deep and she's, and she's trying, trying to keep... To keep. I was thinking uh, the pills blood. in her head just keeps going down. It's not good. When she was uh, daydreaming about the food, the only it was the worst looking food you could possibly ever come up with. I feel like when it was like on screen, like it didn't actually look appetizing. It was just like I don't know. Maybe it was because it was like plastic food or whatever. But the imagery they showed was not appealing. Okay. So I'm not going to lie, at first I thought her addiction was going to be like some bullshit thing about like sugar. And I was going to be oh. like, wait, seriously? And then it got much worse. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, no, her shit's real. And then she ended up in a insane asylum. Mm-hmm. Which also just the fucking ridiculous practice of like, yeah, we know you can barely understand what we're saying whatsoever. Sign off on this electric. But go ahead and just hold your hand, hold this pen, and uh, you can move it on the paper. If not, I'll just take the paper and move it under the pen, so we have something that resembles your signature. Then we're just gonna shock your brains out. God, when they're like shoving the food in her mouth and then like oh. holding their hand over so she has to swallow, it's so fucked. Up. I kept waiting for her to bite one of them. 100% thought that were, that's where that was going. Just, like, try to, like, cover her mouth, and then she was just going to bite someone. And then, nope, no, instead it went to, we're just going to shove this feeding tube as far down your throat as we possibly can. We're going to hit up some ads. We're going to come back and do some trivia. You, you know we love saving the turts. You know Cam hates fucking paper straws. Paper straws. Song. Song. Uh. <laughs> 
I will say that paper straw technology has improved since I last sat on paper straws. I have used a couple since I've been able to go out more recently due oh, to yeah. being vaccinated. And That's what they were uh, doing the whole time while we were inside. They were just inventing better paper straws. I have seen also not paper straws, but it seems like they're compostable plastic straws or something. Like You're talking about like the ones that are made different. out of like agave or whatever? I have no idea what the composition of these straws are. I'm just, <laughs> but they are different. I'm than not a straw expert. You but you're the expert, Dylan. But I do know a good glass straw when I see one, you know? Yes. I will say for those, for being at home and where you, you know, maybe you like straws in your fruity margaritas or you like straws to mix with your, you know, old fashions or whatever, you know, having these straws around the home is really nice. No, not constantly like throwing things away or you don't have to keep buying straws all the time like you just buy a couple and then you're good and if you want cocktail picks or muddlers they have that too it, there's many colors he's getting into like designs so like the pride flag he puts it on like the side of the straw he's got hearts he's got critters it's like you get a piece of art along with a straw a little multi-use uh oh yeah he has critter straws which have there's see a dolphin a salamander that salamander looks intricate. That is impressive. Grab some glass straws from Surfside Sips. Use promo code Cocktails and Classics, spelled out, for twenty percent off. We get a little kickback from that, and you get you get to save some money on some glass straws, and they should last you a long time. Dishwasher safe. They're pretty sturdy. Just don't uh, drop them on the floor like me, like a big idiot. You have to buy more. <laughs> Zach takes over, takes us through some trivia. Zach, what did you got on Requiem for a Dream? Question number one. Oh, no. <laughs> what do you give up for step three for a happy life? No. According to Kathy Tibbins. <laughs> Knew it. Is it A, chocolate, B, pets, or C, orgasms? Wow. Uh. So it was red meat. Yeah. Refined sugar. Mm-hmm. Orgasm it, seems way out of left field. <laughs> it could be, but it feels like it'd just be chocolate due to the yeah other two due to the, foods. But I feel like refined sugars would also refined go sugar, sugar is basically chocolate, though, yeah. right? Well, chocolate is well, basically yeah. refined sugar. <laughs> it's kind of oh, like the right. whole square yeah. rectangle thing, right? I mean, chocolate yeah. does usually come in squares or rectangles, at least. <laughs> oh, you're onto something. That's why they banned Wonder Balls. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no round chocolate. <laughs> must be square i'm here to speak to you today against round chocolate but mainly round chocolate that has candy on the inside don't eat them like onions it's a choking hazard if you eat it like an onion that one kid fucked around and found out <laughs> don't, also don't know who eats an onion like that but... <laughs> i was just saying who eats an onion yeah, like a goddamn kind of apple I watched my great grandmother eat an onion like that once. Oh, did she have <laughs> sat at it, sat at the kitchen table and ate it like <laughs> ate it like an apple? Was it raw like or was one it of those? Yeah, it was a raw white onion. It's like those oh people God. who do like it on TikTok now that they have COVID. And they're like, I can't taste anything. We <sighs> talked about this literally last did, week. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say, did we not just talk about this? Dog, I don't even know. I'm just gonna <laughs> pick C and roll with it. That was the orgasms. I, I yeah, yeah I going think with so. orgasms. Uh, Ben, what did you say? Man. I'm going to say pets. I'm going to say chocolate. I, I think it's food related for some reason. Really, three things you don't want to give up, right? Uh, I'm fine with giving up pets wow. since I don't have any. I don't have any, so well, nothing to give up. They don't. Cameron want. hates You heard it here first. Confirmed. Cameron hates animals. That's not what I said. All right. The correct answer is orgasms. Nice. Yeah, it's never said what step three is. Tabby only says that people f have a really hard time doing it. But if you zoom in on the chalkboard, you can see it says no orgasms in all caps. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right. Well then. So Cam got it with the orgasms answer. Yeah. You know, knowing Zach, I thought that was the meme. Man, so wait. Women only have to follow two rules? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> That's going to land well, Ben. <laughs> we'll land Told well you, Ben. With, uh, like Women have always had it so easy. <laughs> Question number two. Who calls Sarah Goldfarb about going on TV? A. 
Lou Sassel, B. Lau Russell, or C. Larry Tinsel. We're gonna go with Lou Sassel. <laughs> Jeez. Final answer. Locked it in. If it helps, it's only said once. I'm sure. And he says it while Sarah's talking to him. That would be. Uh, that would fit into the theme of ass to ass later in the movie. <laughs> Uh, oh my god. god. <laughs> I don't know if the two are related. Perhaps so. <laughs> um Cam's like, what do you mean? Why would it be loose after that? <laughs> <laughs> How could those two things be related? <laughs> <laughs> um, man, I can't wait to listen to this episode and see that there's no trivia this week. <laughs> <laughs> What was the uh, what was the third one? Something tinsel, Lou tinsel, Larry tinsel, Larry tinsel. What was the second one? Lou, Lau Russell, Lau Russell. <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> I don't know why I'm stuck on the Lou Lou asshole. <laughs> um, Lou asshole, come on, get it right. <laughs> Lou asshole, get it, right. get it tight. Get it right. <laughs> You're just skipping over the part. <laughs> he just literally just called him Lou Asshole. <laughs> I'll say Larry Tinsel. Larry Tinsel. That's my guess. It was Lau Russell. Damn it. Oh, no. I got the boys on that one. That's a point for Zach. I I should I should have. Where's the name well. Larry Tinsel from? Because that sounds familiar. <laughs> I, I almost wrote down Laramie Tunsel and then I had to change the last name. <laughs> That's funny. It's like, all right, yep, I can't just name NFL players here. I have to come up with something. What do we got? We got Kyler Murray, JJ Water, <laughs> <laughs> Lou Sassel. <laughs> or Lou, S- Lou Sassel. <laughs> Question number three. To recap, Cam is in the lead with one point. Yeah. Question number three. Tyrone was on parole for what crime? A. Consorting. B. Dealing drugs. Or C. Assault. I'm going to say A. Consorting. That was, that's also my guess. I don't think he was, I don't think he was there for dealing drugs. And I don't think they arrested him for assault. If I remember correctly. I think he was just running. What is, what is consorting? That's a good question. I honestly was gonna. I I, I didn't want to appear Wait. stupid, so I didn't didn't ask. But I, I honestly well, don't like, know. Like huh. like when the cops I'll, are. I'll leave it to Ben. <laughs> like, Wait, like seriously? Consorting isn't that like literally? You're gonna give them the. Being... You're gonna. You're helping. Oh okay. Well, I mean, we already submitted our answer, so it doesn't matter. All right, give it to him, Ben. I'm. Correct Con- me if I'm consorting wrong. is. Uh, is it consorting not like is being with a known, like felon or whatever, like. It's just hanging out with suspicious looking people. Yeah. Uh, what? Okay. It's one yeah. of yeah. It's, it's literally one of like those... just like hanging out with especially like if someone's then like later arrested for a crime, you're basically like it's guilt by association pretty much. The fuck? How is that it, even a, a crime? It's wow. a crime that uh originates from the Jim Crow era, if that helps at all. That makes sense. I think consorting is right, but in an effort to throw a Hail Mary here. Uh, or just run a QB draw. Um, <laughs> With 10 seconds left, no timeouts. <laughs> yeah, <the> clock. exactly. <laughs> um, I, I'm i going to say assault. It is consorting. Is that the right answer? Yeah. Consorting is the right answer, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Arrest uh, yeah. him for nothing. Dylan was just dumb and didn't make Cameron go first, even though he had a one-point lead. I mean, lead. Cam was going to go with it anyway. I was going to say consorting anyway, but it doesn't I, really matter. I mean, it's not like I was like, ooh, I definitely know what this one is. I'm going to go with this. You know, it was, I was just like, yeah, this is the one I want to... Hopefully Cam goes different for me. I don't know. No. It's when it, when it's yeah. like a one-point thing, it's really hard to just wait for the person to answer, because like, if they take your answer, then you're screwed. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, Cam Cam wins. Uh, ben Ben loses bigly. I have more <laughs> points than Ben. I don't know if your points count. You suck it, Ben. I mean, I literally fucking knew what consorting was. So, you know what? 
take that as my moral point. <laughs> Ben's like, I win say, at life. <laughs> and say that I also knew the final the final question and threw up a Hail Mary hoping it was wrong. Um, Check the tape. makes you feel better, man. Check the tape. I'm the only one who has seen this film. So I'm going to give you a nostalgia rating and an updated one. But first, you get three fresh reviews from Da Boys. Goob Squad. Da Boys. <laughs> so uh, which goob wants to go Sorry, first? <laughs> uh, I guess I'll do it since I usually do. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> We're like a hundred of these in. He's like, all right, I guess I'll go first. Well, he's like, who wants to go first? I literally always go first. <laughs> yeah, do every it again. week it happens yeah, that way. Like, like we like, haven't done this since like the fucking yeah. after the first. You just want me to be episodes. like, stop talking well, you... and just we'll wait for Cam to say something. Fine. Well, you could, you could <laughs> well, just give it to Cam. I mean, like, hey, you could literally Cam, just lead in and be like, all right, Cam. <laughs> yeah. The all right, Cam. Let's go. Cam goes first. He's like, all right, I'll do it since I always do. Fine, I'll do it. Man, the fans are going to be so shocked to hear me go first this week. <laughs> we should tell them that there's like a really awkward 30 second pause after Dylan asks that, and he just edits that bit of audio out until Camp volunteers. This is going to be controversial, I think, but I'm going to give this movie like a four. And here's why. So, I, yep, I, I know I'm getting looks. Um, I didn't, I can't even look at you. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> His video is like, I, oh my god. I didn't like this movie. I mean, I know you're not supposed to like it, but I really did not like this movie. Like, I really, really did not enjoy watching it in any respect. And, like, I get that that might be the point, but I feel like these types of things are just not for me. Um, I get that maybe it was very influential and all that and, and a lot of the acting was pretty good but it's hard to give a movie a high rating when i wish i hadn't watched it so i'm gonna give it a four opposite end of the spectrum i'm gonna give this movie a nine out of ten wow it's it's hard to find a movie that does such a good job making you feel something and it's uncomfortable, and it's sad, and then it gets worse, and it gets worse, and it gets worse. But at at no point in the movie were you like, oh, this is gross, or this is unreal, I have to turn it off. Like You sat there and you watched the whole thing, because it's really good. It's just really real and really sad. Uh, Ellen Burstyn has like one of the greatest all-time acting performances here. This is like... Brando and the Godfather, Heath Ledger's Joker, this is like that type of territory. I'm kind of bummed she doesn't get as much recognition for it. Watching this woman like go through the shit she goes through and ends up in the mental asylum is is crazy. Um, I think everybody should see this movie once. Only once. And not on a Saturday morning. So I'm going to say I don't disagree with what Cameron is saying this is a movie that objectively is like it's it's not up my alley like I said it's like holding your hands above your head and getting just punched in the gut repeatedly and you just keep watching it uh, like how people say like a, a a train wreck like you just can't look away it's like that so I don't I don't necessarily blame him for objectively not reviewing it super highly because i i get a hundred percent what he's saying and i do agree with it it's just it's not a movie i enjoyed watching you know this isn't a movie i sat there watching with a smile on my face like ooh, i can't wait to see what happens next but it, it's a good movie objectively it's really well done like zach said um now i'm blanking on the woman's name here ellen um, ellen Burstyn does a phenomenal job uh yeah i, I think let, she 100 percent should be when people talk about great acting performances this should be brought up this should be like a, a class this is a master class of of seeing someone kind of slowly descend into i guess literally into madness um the subject matter isn't the easiest to swallow. 
I, I gave this movie a seven. You only need to watch it once. I don't think this is a movie you have to go back and revisit. Uh, but it is a really well-made movie. It's not something that I'm ever going to be sitting there scrolling through and be like, man, Requiem for a Dream. I could really go for that right now. Uh, but It'd be funny if you did, though. <laughs> <laughs> Very but it is, it is a good movie, so I, I give it props. Going in, I had this movie at a 9 out of 10. And damn, it's been a long while since I've seen this movie. It's it's just not a fun movie to watch, like you guys have said. Like, it's not it's not very redeeming <laughs> in what happens. Like, you feel kind of shitty and sad. But I do love that about a movie. I think a, a movie that can move you and like have you thinking about it after does so much more for me than say like a marvel movie or or like something where it's just kind of like a popcorn flick like cheesy absorb it kind of thing i think a movie like this you you just it's an experience like an assault on the senses i think it is a fantastic movie Uh, it's so well done from the cinematography i love matthew labatik uh the acting is really well done everyone does a great job the sound design is phenomenal and it makes you really think about how important sound design is to a movie. I, I would say this is Darren Aronofsky's best movie. I think this is his, this is his 2001, a space odyssey. If I'm, if I'm drawing an equivalent of like masterpiece movies that someone has done, I'm going to leave it at a nine out of 10. And I, I just think it's like a train wreck that you can't look away from. Check it out on HBO and check us out. Hurry. But oh, hurry. Yes. Hurry. I think it leaves at the end of the month, so that'll only leave a couple days when, when this episode drops. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to rate and subscribe. Check us out on Instagram at Cocktails and Classics Pod. Check the show notes. Make yourself a requiem for a dream. Hit the Drizzly and Cash links. Buy some Surfside Sips. It all helps us. And you get cool shit. Check out next week as we watch The Notebook to kick off our wine and cheese month. Share us with your friends and family. As always, watch responsibly.